The Germans conquered Poland in 1939. This started the Second World War. In the previous video we talked about how the Germans perceived the outbreak of this war. In this video we're going to take a look at the German perspective on their invasion and subsequent occupation of Poland. Stay tuned. Good to have you back on the channel and if you are new to this channel my name is Stefan I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you and if you like that you know consider subscribing and also hit the bell. We know that the Germans they were ruthless in their campaign in Poland which is also known as the Poland campaign or the Polish defensive war. It started on September 1st when the Germans invaded Poland. The campaign would last till early October. One German soldier wrote on September 7th. Burning houses, weeping women, howling children, a picture of despair. But the Polish people didn't want it better. Two days later this soldier wrote about setting Polish houses ablaze because they believed shots came from that house. Soon burning houses lined our path and from the flames resounding the cries of those who had hidden inside and were no longer able to save themselves. The cattle lowed in fear, a dog howled till it was burned up, but the worst was the screaming of the people. It was cruel, but they shot and so deserved death. Straight after the Germans had crossed the border and marched into Poland, they met military resistance. As a result of this they carried out reprisals against the Polish population. In other words, the Polish military fought to defend its country and the civilians suffered at the hands of the Germans. And at some point, and I know I'm gonna perhaps make some Polish viewers angry, but at some point the Polish military committed atrocities against ethnic Germans. Now let's be clear here. The claim that the Polish authorities before the war broke out was butchering ethnic Germans simply is not true. But Polish soldiers did execute ethnic Germans once the German invasion of Poland had started. Why? The claim that Polish soldiers killed ethnic Germans once the German invasion had begun is true, but Nazi propaganda blew it out of proportions and they named it Bloody Sunday and the Polish killings pale in comparison to the German atrocities that already started right from the get-go. Reason for Polish soldiers to kill ethnic Germans was the fear of a fifth column and in some cases it was proven these ethnic Germans actually were picking up arms against the Polish military. Anthony Beaver he wrote the following about it. A massacre in which 223 ethnic Germans died although the official German history puts the figure at 1000. Estimates of a total number of ethnic Germans killed throughout the Poland vary from 2000 to 13,000, but the most likely figure is around 6,000. Goebbels later inflated the total number to 58,000 in an attempt to justify the German program of ethnic cleansing against the Poles. This is actually a topic for a standalone video, and did you know that I actually already wrote a script and I was on location a bit gushed at the end of 2019. They were building something on the square I wanted to shoot the video. So eventually I was short on time and I didn't record it. So if I ever return to Bitgasht, I will shoot that video. It's interesting that the, by the Nazis inflated number to 58,000 ethnic Germans being killed by the Poles kept lingering in the minds of the people. Because when in 1943, Joseph Goebbels, propaganda minister, wanted to create sympathy for the Poles in order to convince the German public that the Soviet terror was far greater, the people reminded him of the 58,000 ethnic Germans that were killed, which wasn't true. But what does this show? It shows that the propaganda ministry was not able to shape public opinion at will. When Poland was defeated, the Polish state, also known as the Second Polish Republic, was partitioned. 
Its former eastern territories were annexed by the USSR according to the molotov ribbentrop Pact that was signed near the end of August 1939 between the Nazis and the Soviets. Also, Slovakia gained some territories in the south since they also participated in the invasion. The western territories of Poznan and Silesia were annexed into the German Reich and fell into the zones Danzig, West Prussia, Wateland, Lower and Upper Silesia. Eastern Prussia got extended. The rest of Poland became the so-called General Government with Krakow as its capital where the Poles and Jews were forced to live and die. In the weeks after German invasion and the weeks after it, 16 to 28 thousand Poles were executed by the Germans and over 500 towns and villages were burned down. The death toll would increase in the months after. A special task force known as the Einsatzgruppe were mobilized to perform these killings and were assisted by ethnic Germans who volunteered. Now some German soldiers they were not willing to watch the execution of women and children and they walked away. German commanders Johannes Blaskovic and Walcher von Brauchitz, they were actually appalled by these atrocities and they believed it undermined military morale. Therefore, they complained. Hitler dismissed these protests by stating, one cannot wage war with salvation army methods. Blaskovic was eventually replaced. Now one German soldier, a World War I veteran and a devout Catholic, he was stationed in Poland and he wrote a letter to his wife. November 1939. It's not about retaliation. It looks more like imitating the Russians and trying to exterminate the intelligentsia. Who would have thought it? Of a regime with the deadly hatred of Bolshevism. How gladly I became a soldier, but today I'd like to tear the field gray uniform into pieces. This man is World War I veteran. He was stationed in Warsaw during the war and a couple of times he also intervened and made sure that arrested Poles were released from custody. He befriended their families and he had even his wife coming over to meet them. And this was unique since occupied Poland was a land where the apartheid between Germans and Poles was prevalent. The letters to his wife became somewhat of a personal confession. Now do notice that this man, he did believe that the Germans were of a higher culture and had a right and a duty to rule over the Poles. So therefore he was in favor of the German occupation of Poland. However, his moral restrictions and humanitarian convictions remained. And this is rare. Another devout Catholic, he viewed the Poles with suspicion. And he claimed to see behind the melancholy of their eyes, hatred and real fanaticism. If there was no more military here, within three weeks not a single ethnic German would survive. One sees quite clearly in their eyes that this people is predestined for revolution. After the German takeover, expulsions of Poles from the German annexed, so-called recovered, territories began. 619,000 Poles were resettled to the general government. The majority came from Waterland. Total number of German expelled Poles is debated by historians ranging from 1.7 to 2.5 million. During the winter of 1939-1940, many Poles were put on trains without adequate food and clothing. Upon leaving their house, they had to make sure everything was cleaned up for the new owners. In their place came ethnic Germans. From the Baltic states came 60,000 Volksdeutsche and others came from Volhynia. Some of them couldn't even speak German. The German people, they knew violence was being committed against the Poles. But by emphasizing the German death and the German suffering, they saw it as a necessary retaliation. The German violence was therefore insignificant and soon Poland disappeared from public conversations. The dispute with Poland was now settled and the German people hoped that their Führer would settle a peace with the Western Allies and that the war would be over. Underscoring his specific intentions, Hitler insisted again that he had no territorial claims on Britain and France and once more offered to make peace with the Western powers. He even offered to create a rum Polish state. As usual, Hitler blamed a certain international Jewish capitalism and journalism for the warmongering, leaving it to be good sense of the British to avoid the death and destruction which would follow 
if they choose to continue the war. And, you know, there are some revisionist viewers who now say, hey, look, Hitler, you know, he offered peace. Yeah, but the Western Allies, they weren't having it. Because Hitler spoke of peace in 1936 when he invaded the Rhineland. And he spoke of peace in 1938 at the Munich Conference, after which he annexed the whole of Czech. Hitler was out for aggressive expansionism. However, the German press made it look like he was a peacemaker. He surely was not. Because after the invasion of Poland, he had his eye on the West. Plans were made to launch an invasion. More about that later. A big thanks to the patrons you see on screen. And a special thanks to Janusz Dusinkiewicz, Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, RL and Fernando Lopez Ojeda. If you want to learn about life in German-occupied Poland, click here. If you want to learn about life in Soviet-occupied Eastern Poland, you can click right here. I want to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and also share this video to all your friends. I see you later.